the vending machine. How does this device give hungry customers the snack they're after, but keep out any freeloaders? More than 2,500 parts work in unison. An anchored steel shell, as tough as a security safe. A compact cooling system. Pumps at 2,000 times a minute to keep the contents cool. 500 feet of loaded coils. Shuttle the goods into reach. And a smart anti-theft door keeps them safe from prying hands. To serve over 6,000 snacks every year. The key to survival in a world where everyone's after a free snack is the way that workers build the vending machine's rugged skeleton. At America's fastest growing vending machine company in Illinois, they make their machines tough to crack. People are always gonna try to get a free candy bar or a can of soda. Chad makes the panels that form the heavy duty metal cabinet. Our vending machines need to be strong uh, to keep people from breaking into them and stealing all the profits and product. <laughs> the 5 hundredths of an inch thick metal will stand up to kicks and blows without a dent. This machine won't give up its goodies without a fight. Once cut, welders fuse the cabinet walls into place. The heavy-duty joins make sure there's no easy openings for prying hands to break in. When you're hungry, you never quite have the right coins for the snack you want. How does the machine know to send back anything fake and keep track of how much you've paid? The machine deciphers coins with pinpoint accuracy. Light sensors measure the size, and electromagnets detect the metal type, identifying the coins in split seconds and sorting them into columns, diverting fakes to the reject chute. When change is due, the columns carefully release one coin at a time, tumbling into the chute. These 85 parts work together to count 15,000 coins a year and release your snack at the touch of a button. Some of these vending machines will spend their entire lives outdoors. So to make sure it's fit to serve you snacks, each machine needs protection from the elements. If you don't paint it, it's gonna rust really quick. I would say within the first year. <laughs> Tim heads up the paint team. First, he power washes the raw metal clean. Then, Tim's ovens burn off any remaining water. My first oven is at almost 500 degrees, so it's pretty hot in here all day. And to provide the ultimate finish, Tim must enter a brutal paint shop to complete the job by hand. Weatherproofing an entire vending machine is a tough task. Robotic sprayers add a coat of powdered paint. The powder is electrically charged, so it sticks to the metal. Tim touches up any spots the sprayers miss. He has to work fast. The conveyor only moves at one mile an hour, but there are a lot of hard to reach spots on a cabinet nearly six feet tall. A final bake fuses the paint then Tim inspects the rust-resistant finish. Well, this cabinet, now that it's finished, has actually got a nice even coat over the top of it. It is now fully protected over all the elements for wherever we're going to ship it out. But when you're hungry, there's nothing more frustrating than your snack getting stuck. How do today's generation of vending machines make sure you get your treat every time? hidden behind the keys. A computer orders one of 32 matchbox-sized motors to turn the spiral 360 degrees. 
as the snack falls. It breaks a line of 10 infrared beams. If nothing crosses the beams, the computer makes the coils turn again. With this ingenious technology, you'll always get your snack and never leave hungry. Snack dispensing coils are the distinctive feature of a vending machine. These spirals of spring steel trap the goodies until you've parted with your cash. But how does one basic shape handle everything from sandwiches to soda cans? My job here is to make sure that you put the right size coils for the right size product. Justin custom builds the coil mechanism for each machine. He installs a set of miniature motors. They drive gear wheels that rotate each coil just far enough to push a product off the shelf. Large or uneven shaped snacks require two coils. The coils need to have opposite spirals, otherwise the snack won't budge. So this would be a dual coil here. Your snack would fit in this area. So you have a right and a left. Your right go one way, your lefts go the other way. So that when your coils spin, they spin opposite of each other, but still bend that product forward. If they're going the same direction of each other, then it's gonna drive it backwards versus driving the product forward. So the final stage in the process is clipping it in and making sure that your coils rotate properly. A squashy bag of potato chips is a tough test for the coils. If they aren't fitted right, it won't move. So it looks like it vended just fine. They wouldn't have any worry about their product hanging up and it's working properly. So I'm confident on sending this machine out to someone. The machine is ready for a lifetime of dishing out instant snacks to hungry customers.